can't. And he's going to be playing this hard because he's trying to create an angle. And he's got to miss that blue too. This is going to be tight. Oh, what a shot that is. That is a brilliant shot. But he's not been rewarded. And you can see Albin tap of the table. He knew what Max was trying there. You could see the cue ball just swerve a little bit off the rail. These are the shots where, after a couple of days play, the players will be more fine-tuned with the pace of the table. You can see he's trying to hold this ball, and it's, he wasn't playing for the two in this pocket. He was playing for it in the left centre. And he needed an angle because... He could have actually played position for this red three in the same pocket where this blue two is going. But I don't think he can now. Yeah, so he's just going to be playing safe. Needs his cue ball to slow down again. Needs it to slow down. Should be okay. Could even maybe play a cheeky 3-9 cheeky combo. And then hook his opponent behind the four. But the main goal, if that's not on, would of course just be to lock the cue ball up behind that pink four. Yeah, so the nine was going nowhere near the side, so he wasn't even attempting that. Main purpose was to get that cue ball locked on the pink four, which he has done. Yeah, and now so much pressure on Lechner here because you look at the position he's left the balls in. Ball in hand for Ocean from this position would be long odds on for 3 0. Yeah, he's going to go close to it in three, but he's got to be a little bit careful because there's a little gap Extension code. on the left side of that three. And if he finds that gap, he could scratch off this ball in the top pocket. So he's got to be careful. Oh, it's a nice shot again, though. He's actually played some tidy shots in this opening couple of racks as Max. Yeah, he has. And hasn't maybe had the best of running, the best of fortune at times. Yeah, if anything, probably just a little bit inexperienced with his brand new equipment. And that's all, but as we said before, his last couple of years, and even before COVID, Michael, he was he was really turning into one of the, the, the top players from Europe. Well, there were so many players, actually, around that time, late 2019, early 2020, who were starting to find a new level in their careers and get a bit of momentum behind them. I think of about six or seven players who fall into the category of having all that momentum halted by the shutdown. And it's been a mixed bag, really, in terms of whether or not they've picked up since then. But Lechner did have a good 2021, got to the quarterfinals of both of the two biggest events, World Championship and the US Open. Nicely done there from Max again. Needs to get his first rack on the board, stay in this match. Yeah. Over on table two, yeah. Joshua Filler is leading the Ukiyoi 3 1. And he is at the table. Looks like he's about to get himself on the hill. Yeah, he was attempting a 2 9 combination, but it hasn't come off for him. Of course, you can follow the action on table two throughout the week on matchroom.live. Well, he's attempting the famous Efren Reyes Z shot here. He's going to go in between the... Well, look at that. Not only is he attempting it, he's got himself a YouTube highlight reel. That will be all over social media in the next 10 minutes. The old Efren Reyes Z shot. I don't think even Efren Reyes could have played it any better than that. Magnificent stuff. Look at this. What a way to break out of the tactical exchanges that we've seen so much of in the early stages of this match.
beautiful safety shot there from Alvin. The speed was immense. Max has got to feel like the world's against him at the moment, but it's still only 2-0 and needs to kick this ball. Got to be careful of the scratch in the bottom right pocket. He's trying to come two rails behind it and he's missed it. The slide shot. has affected his kick shot. So Alvin's going to get ball in hand now and he can put the cue ball anywhere you want with one shot. Yeah, it'd be quite something to have two dry breaks in the first three racks and still be 3-0 up, but that's a very real prospect now. And I think for these top players, as you say, would be expected to get through the first phase, Carl. What they'll be thinking of primarily, they want to get through, but if possible, they want to have it wrapped up with maybe a day, day and a half of this phase. And then they can see the rest of the opening stage really as practice, get used to the table, really get their rhythm built up. Because everyone does start again from zero, effectively, in the second phase. So once you're through, it doesn't really matter what happens after that. It will certainly matter to most of the players you're playing because they'll still be trying to qualify. These are all the different narratives we'll see in this new format that we have. so the opposite of that for Ocean when we were here for the Championship League just under a year ago such a struggle for him to get through he was getting very frustrated with himself finally managed to get through at the sixth attempt earned himself a day off came back for the winners group just scraped through to the semi-finals and ended up taking the title launching a stellar year for him not been stellar play from him so far today but he's still very much in command here he leads Max Lechner by three racks to nil. Welcome back to the opening day of the Predator Premier League here in Milton Keynes. This is the action on table two. Joshua Filler, former winner of the US Open and the World Championship, leading 3-2 against Noyuki Oi, the rapidly improving player from Japan. Filler leading 3-2, a chance to get himself to the hill here. 
First to five throughout. All the way through to the final of the whole thing next Monday. Back on table one, Max Lechner. 3-0 down in the All-Austrian match against Alban Ocean. And that's another dry break. Push out, God. And he's just trying to hit the ball a little more head on, trying to make something happen. Explain to us from a player's perspective, Carl, the push out option. Well, basically, after the break shot, a player can play a push out. So what that means is he can. He can pot a ball, he can roll the cue ball anywhere on the table. And then when the incoming player, so in this case, Max comes back to the table, he's going to have the option. So here you see Albin's had a little look. He's pushed the cue ball down the bottom. So Max will come, have a look at his options. If he fancies something, he can play the shot. If he doesn't, well, he'll be, he'll be telling Albin, carry on, pal. So you're kind of playing a bit of a tease game, a little bit of cat and mouse on the push-out because, of course, you don't want to leave anything dead easy because at this level, even if it's a safety shot or a bank shot, the player's going to take you on. So you've always got to leave that little bit of a tricky shot or something where, you know, these guys and, and girls play pool matches against each other all year round all over the world. So you kind of get a little bit of a feel of a player's, player's weaknesses and strengths. It's almost like an element of, if a player feels that an element of his game is being questioned and a weakness has been spotted, he maybe wants to prove the other player wrong, which can lure Extension him into something. Cold. All that psychology is going on. Yeah, along with the scoreline as well. Sometimes if you're losing a match quite heavy, you might think, I'm going to have a go at something a little bit crazy to try and get some you know, momentum on your side. But Albin's going to be feeling pretty good this opening match of the event. Now the shot itself does look quite tricky because he can he can play the one past that pink four ball either side to hit that top rail. So he can get the one safe. It's just where's the cue ball going. percent certain what was attempted there it was it looks a little bit harder pace i don't believe he's took the pot on but at first glance at the pace he's played it maybe it was on and this is a nasty shot max's face with if this is dead straight cue ball is really close to that rail so extension if you're practicing you kind of jack the cue up and try and spin this ball in when it comes off, it looks great. Well, he's queuing level, so he's playing this with top spin, so he must have a little bit of an angle. This isn't easy, though. He's going to be playing this very hard. Yeah, it can always make you look a bit silly, but they are real tough shots. And this one ball passes that purple five, so Max has got to pray that the red three, which is a couple of balls in front, but this is what you you do look at when you're playing pool. He's got to hope that red three doesn't pot. After Albin's potted this one ball, cue ball's going over towards the right for the blue two. So it's all about this red three. You would think that does pot. He's just having a good look there. If you can get the cue ball out in the middle of the table, he can pot it and draw off that brown seven. Over on table two, Joshua Phillips at the table. He's winning that match 4-2. So if he runs the remaining five balls, well, he'll be the first pool player in this event. Well, he's tried to dislodge. Look at this for a shot. Unlucky. Just flick the seven there from Albin. Yeah, Joshua Phillips could be the first pool player to win a match in this year's event.
Yeah, he missed out on being here last year for the Championship League, as I recall. He uh, had COVID issues, which forced the last-minute withdrawal. Ralph Suke, actually, much more older, more experienced German player, came in to replace him. trying to use that seven for the cue ball, the brown seven to block and and use the other three balls up the top end of the table also as blockers but he's over it that but that's a bit of experience, many a pool player would try and fire at the bank in the right side pocket there last moments over on the other table Joshua Filler has the easiest of nine balls to complete an opening win and the man from Germany has seen off Noyuki Oi by five racks to two Next up on that table will be Omar Al Shaheen, who was runner up in the World Championship last year against Oliver Sholnocki. One of the many rising stars on the European scene at the moment. That was a good shot from Max. So Albin's playing the kick. Where's this eight ball going? Where is the eight ball going? Wow, things are happening nicely. I'm sure Max is having a little smile to himself there because it looked like maybe it does still sneak past. I don't think that does, does it? Doesn't look like it, but the way he's lining up to it here. Perhaps so, or is he just trying to get in behind the eight? No, there's plenty of room for it in the end. Yeah. We need our eyes tested. Carl. Yeah, that looked like uh, the eight ball had come to spoil the fun for Max. But this is a genuine chance now to get his first rack on the board. As I said, he's played some nice shots so far, just just lacking that little bit of experience in the arena. We've seen a lot of tactical play early on in the match, but it's not like, for example, you might see in snooker, one player might decide to make it go that way. In nine ball pool, when you see a lot of tactical play, it tends to be just a result of the way the balls fall. Yeah, and the good thing with pool in this modern world is it's it's very easy on the eye. It's quite a fast game, isn't it? You know, sometimes there's a break and run. It doesn't last longer than a minute. And then even the safety aspect of pool, you're not getting 30 minutes of safety play. It's, you know, two or three safety shots and a kick or a jump shot and... Often the players then create an opportunity to run the rack out. So it's a very fast game. And yet you can also see racks where so much happens and you get a variety of all different types of play. You think of that final rack on the penultimate night, the Moscone Cup back in December, Jeremy Jones and David Alcady and all the drama there was over what really was the pivotal rack of the whole thing repelled any hopes of the Americans just staging a little bit of a mini comeback at the end of that night. Yeah, Max nearly lost the cue ball again then. It just stopped in time, so he's got a nice shot on this eight, but he didn't want to be this close to it. And this is going to be his first rack on the board at this year's inaugural Premier League pool event. And Max Lechner will be very relieved to have got that on the board. He closes to 3-1. Carl, we mentioned the Moscone Cup there. Europe retaining us in London just before Christmas. You, of course, were once again a vice-captain to Alex Laley. So what were your reflections on the week? A little bit closer this time than last year, but still pretty comfortable for Europe. Yeah, in the end, it, it looked comfortable on, on, on paper, but it didn't feel comfortable <laughs> Certainly over the, the first day or two, it was a little bit scary. And I think the one thing w was great was the, the fans were back. That was the big thing. It was, you know, it was a bit scary playing in empty arenas. And especially for the Moscone Cup, you want that crowd. They make that event. That's what it's all about. And I think in the end, you know, America was a little bit unlucky. Obviously, Earl Strickland wasn't allowed to play due to COVID and on paper 
maybe just lack that little bit of strength in depth so maybe it was a fair outcome in the end yeah the americans were very reliant on shane van boning he ended up playing a huge number of matches and he didn't get the results it was a little unfortunate not to have a better record a lot of his matches were pretty close and just turned on one or two shots here and there but overall they're still very dependent on one or two names van boning skylar woodward yeah and i think on day two that that point where Chris Reinhold missed that, missed that ball on the hill. That was the big turning point because it give give us, you know, Team Europe that a little bit of a lifeline, and we certainly went to bed that night a lot more happier than if he had a potted it. That's for sure. And of course, this week, this is very similar. It's race to fives. You're going to see matches where a flip of a coin, something happens, and all of a sudden, a player losing a match. He's back in the match. This is a look at table two. It's Omar El Shaheen and Oliver Shonoki, two of the players who really took the opportunity from the revived schedule in 2021 to greatly enhance their reputations in the game. So it's going to be interesting to see with an even busier schedule coming up in 2022 whether Probably players like that can now build on it. Leading by three rocks to one. Back here, I know had a better 2021 than anyone. Alban Ocean leading three one. So he's made a ball at last. And it was the one ball in the side. So we will keep an eye on that because that is the break shot. Often players do try. They either try and pop the one ball in the side pocket or they're trying to make the wing ball, which is the ball on the end of the rack, on the side of the rack into the corner. So as this day unfolds, we will talk a little bit more about that. Alvin's face with, well, he can pot this ball, but just potting it is no good because the ball after this shot is that red three. And that's the ball that's near the cue ball. So how's he going to pot this and break that out? Well, he isn't, is he? So is he playing safe? He is playing safe. He's trying to put the cue ball in behind the pink four. And that is not an easy shot, what he's attempted and he's done a wonderful job of course you would think max would hit this blue too but it's all about just staying in the rack if you're alvin you can only play the shot you're faced with extension court now in an exhibition, you could even attempt to pop this two off two rails into the top right and knock the three out. But, I mean, that is that is very adventurous. I want to go to one of your exhibitions, Carl, if that's the sort of shot you attempt. Well, I'm not saying I'm going to make it, but I'd attempt it. <laughs> So this rack is all about that red three ball. Again, Albin can pot this ball, but there's no real value because the cue ball is going to be running into the purple five. Extension code. There's no fantastic safety shot available here. You could, you could maybe play a snooker style safety. You don't really see that on a pool table where you just bump that blue two back up table. It's not a shot that really comes up and he's not really going to offer too much for Alvin so let's see what he's thinking here he didn't go for the pot he definitely didn't attempt the pot he was playing the cue ball over to the right hand side because he knew he had a load of balls there to duck so it was well thought out yeah, this little exchange could go on for a while with that three so awkwardly placed Got to be value in attempting the two. Can he get the cue ball through that gap? It looks like he can. That's incredible. He needs his two to travel. He needs it to travel. Now, has it travelled enough? 
because it could pop this ball and go over towards the that little cluster now that you can see from the overhead. It's just ran a little bit too far for that. If it had just stopped a little bit quicker, he would have had half a chance, but now I don't think he can. Well, is he digging low on it? Can he swing it over towards there? No, he's playing a bank safety. I think it was more safety, to be honest. Maybe it was a bank shot will let you off Albin. So, here comes the problem. This red three ball. I don't think he played the bank shot there. I think he was just trying to play a good cue ball again. Can he draw the cue ball back in behind this nine ball and green six? Big target. Yeah, he's done well. Where's the seven going? Oh, he's at the point, so that's all right. He would have been <laughs> a little bit scared for a moment then. This is definitely one of Albin's strengths, you know, obviously we said before Michael Pool's a very fast game and there's a lot of runouts, but the safety side of nine ball pool is very underrated. That often creates a lot of opportunities for you for yourself to get ball in hand or even if Max hits it he needs a little bit of luck. Needs to hit a rail and he has done. Yeah, I doubt we're going to see many matches over the course of the eight days with this much tactical play involved. As I say, it's just the way the balls have fallen. I don't think either of them has turned up with the intent to play that way. Thirty-second shot clock in operation from the start. We didn't actually have it for the first couple of days when we were here last year under the old format, the Championship League format, and it was a feeling that needed to be introduced when it was going on very late, and it just became a totally different game. So the three went in the left side pocket. It was probably quite tight, and he had to play it hard to get the cue ball back up and down the table to get on that pink four. This is not an easy shot for Max. This is probably as difficult as it gets. On, on a 9 5 pool table, putting the ball. He's got quite a big angle here. And the cue ball's everything. He's got to control this cue ball. And he's decelerated. He's not finished the shot off there. He's kind of quit on the shot. Not delivered the cue through strong enough. Yeah, and what's happening here is in this match, often when a player makes a little bit of a mistake, they're kind of getting away with it, even on a jump shot or a kick shot. They're not selling out that's what we call it in nine ball you've sold out so can he pop this or does he have to go rail first yeah he can just pop he's got to play it is he going to play this slow or is he going to try and come up and down the table yeah he's trying to come up and this was the problem the five's got in his way but it's just took a little nudge at the end off the five again i don't think he can pop this though might be seeing a bank shot there's a little bit of value in the bank if he can't pop this ball. If he has to swerve it a little bit, he might be tempted with the swerve. Just depends on... He's obviously close, because that's what he's doing there. He's getting himself level with the line of the shot. Often you see players close one eye, so they're using the dominant eye to sight it a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Did the clock yeah. run out? Defo. It seemed to. Yeah, he's been called for a time foul. Start the clock, please. Well, Mr. Experience there. Obviously, uh, lost the plot there. If there's one man in this event that's used to the shot clock. It's, it's Mr. Ocean. we do have to bear in mind they don't actually get the beeps in the arena because you've got two tables going on obviously that wouldn't work so they do get a call out and they're running out on time and they can see the shot clock but it's not a case of playing to the beeps 
So it's not something you see very often at all, the player at this level being caught out by the shot clock. You almost can't believe it when it does happen, but it's proved very significant here. Max Lechner continues his recovery. He was 3-0 down. It's now 3-2. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's all gone Albion Ocean's way and it's just turned on its head, this little match now. Here's what's happening next door. As I said, it's a clash of two of the rising names in the game. And Omar Al Shaheen has won the opening rack against Oliver Shulnoki. It's an important match for both of them. I think players of this sort of level, not the very top players, We'll be looking at the matches against each other as the ones they really need to win. Because they're the guys they're most likely to be vying with for the last placings in those 10 who get through to the next phase. I think the first couple of days, no one's going to be looking too much at the table. It's just about going out there, getting as many wins as you can, seeing where that leaves you, and trying to estimate how many more you're going to need in the later stages of the opening phase. Yeah, this is Oliver Shulnoki. He's got quite an unusual cue action. Not very easy on the eye, if that's fair to say. But he's been doing well the last sort of 12 months on the on the pool calendar, on the, on the pool season. So, interested to see how he goes on this week. Yeah, and we were talking about the Moscone Cup earlier and how the Americans maybe need a bit more strength and depth. Sean, depth, rather. Shulnoki's one of those players you look at along with the likes of... Yes. For Tunsky and one or two Back others, and you think this is what Europe, Europe have coming through as their next string. There are options who could step up when the uh, current players perhaps aren't so prominent anymore. So good times for the European scene and for the European Moscone Cup team. Back here, it's Max Lechner, 3 2 down. And it's a golden break. Wow, didn't take long to see the first of those. Magnificent stuff. And this. Recovery that we've seen has just gathered even more momentum in no time at all. After all the drawn-out nature of the previous rack, this has taken just one shot to resolve. Just to clarify, if you're not familiar with nine ball, if you pop the nine ball off the break, that's it, you've won the rack. And all of a sudden, it's three all, Carl, and Alban Ocean is under early pressure. And we'll be back with you in just a moment. Welcome back to Milton Keynes, the opening morning of the Predator Premier League. And an intriguing opening match here. Alban Ocean, the world champion, was 3-0 up against Max Lechner, but his fellow Austrian has come all the way back to 3-all, completing that recovery. 
with a golden break in the sixth rack, potting the nine ball off the break. And now they both need two more to get that first win on the board. Nice cue ball control there from Albin, just parking the cue ball in the center of the table. Yeah, he does have a shot on this one. But he's going to be playing it into a blind pocket, and that's what we call it when, when the pocket is not in your eye line. So that's what he's done there. He's had a little step to the right. Just checking where the pocket is. I mean, it never changes, but it just kind of settles you. And then when you come back to the shot, you feel like you've sighted this better. So we're putting everything into the pot here. Cue ball's going to be coming round off. Oh, he's played it with a bit of left spin. Needs this to roll. Needs it to carry on. Not too bad. He's going to play a two onto the red three. That would keep him at the table. And just pay attention to the nine ball. He's going to use the nine ball to hold the cue ball. But the nine, he's going to go pretty close to the other corner. So he'll be bearing that in mind. Make sure you get the combo, though. Make sure that three disappears. Yeah, you called it. The nine did go close. Never really looked as though it was actually going to drop in. But a chance here for Ocean to reassert himself. I wouldn't say he was playing spectacularly to lead 3-0. But he was very much on top. And it's a very different match now. And perhaps a 5-9 combination coming up after this. It's not dead set. Extension code. I'm not saying it's the hardest combo Albin's ever been faced with, but what I mean is if this nine ball was di directly in a line, it would be really easy. Now he's just got to aim this purple five. He'll pick a point in the distance, and this is to get on the hill. Just the sort of rack that Albin Ocean needed. He's back in control here. He's back in the lead, and he's first to the hill at 4-3. Yeah, and I think over the course of the week, Michael, this is probably as long as a match he's going to get, you would think. Yeah, well, it's almost an hour now since we started playing and could still potentially be another two racks to come, but it's been a very unusual match in the sense of the sheer amount of tactical play that we've seen. We actually saw this on the first couple of days last year when I was saying they didn't have a shot clock in place. And I think it led to players getting a bit bogged down, actually. But uh, that certainly isn't the reason this time. We do have the shot clock right from the start. It's played a significant role already, as we saw on the fifth rack. That'll be something the players have to get used to. They won't be having the beeps. Yeah, over on matchroom.live, this is table number two in action. This is Oliver Shaw Nokia. He's had some good results. the world of pool recently and he seems to get the job done it doesn't look pretty what i mean by that is it's not textbook queuing and fundamentals but he gets the job done yeah and what we've seen in some of those results he's had over the last couple of years is he's no respecter of reputations and he's not afraid of anybody any of the big names Well, leading this match work. now by two racks to one against the world championship finalist. Okay, Meanwhile, the man who beat him in the final is on the hill. So what can Max Lechner do about it? 4-3 down. exactly what he didn't want it's another dry break yeah that's definitely been the story of this match both players have not really found the break shot yet well half the racks have 
Had a dry break. They've had two apiece now. Now this is a shot that is not easy. He's going to be playing this into the top left pocket. And he's got to really get into the cue ball here. He's going to need to draw this off the side and back out for the blue too. As is often the case though, Carl, with a shot that isn't easy. Big, big rewards potentially if he can pull it off. Oh, that's real quality. And now it's a chance for Ocean to get this match won. a lovely shot there and he got into the cue ball really well he actually come off the second side rail and now this is a good chance just got to take care of this long pot on the two didn't go in clean and that's what he's doing there he's he often beats himself up a lot Albin if he doesn't cue it how he how he wants you know as a player when you hit the ball if you've delivered the cue through straight or if you've kind of come across it a little bit and I think that's what he was signalling there. He just didn't deliver the cue Extension through code. as straight as he would have liked. But it's gone in. And just looking at this table layout here, he's just got to make sure he comes anywhere back out where the rest is. Rest head is, is fine. Yeah, he does get down on himself, does get frustrated with himself. And it's counterproductive because he plays his best stuff when he isn't like that. Really nice guy away from the table and when he's in that sort of serenity of mind that's when we see him at his best well the way he was holding the, the bridge there you could see he's not very good with the bridge it's not you know if you watch the way certainly the way the snooker players use the the rest as we call it in the UK because the table's a lot bigger, they're going to use the rest a little bit more. And you could see <laughs> the way Albin was holding it. It didn't look comfortable at all. It just looked so awkward, didn't it? And that's why he's been left with an awkward result. Yeah, and he's had a result because he wasn't playing for the, the pink four in this pocket. And where the cue ball's landed, he has got a shot. So he's been real fortunate there. Yep, it was a tricky one, but as you say, at least he had a go at it, and now, really, it would be quite a surprise if this wasn't end of match. One more match to play in this opening session. That'll be towards the end of the session over on the other table against Mieszko for Tunski. Lechner can actually be back in action quite soon because he'll be next up over on the other table against Oliver Shulnoki, who's currently in play and leading 2-1 against Omar al Shaheen. Yeah, Albin would have liked the cue ball on the rail. That would have given himself the perfect angle, but he'll just cheat the pocket here a little bit. He'll play it off the rail. And yeah, there you see he's topping through, and this looks absolutely perfect. Well, in rack six for Max Lechner, it was a golden break. In rack eight, it was a dry break. And it's proved to be a costly one because after a match which has had a little bit of everything really, Alban Ocean, who led 3-0 and got pegged back to 3-all, has come through to win. He's got his first win on the board. He wins the All-Austrian Encounter by five racks to three. Next